Okay boys, today we're going to take a very close look at the editing process. Now there's a number of steps to our editing process, just like everything with writing, we follow the plan and the procedure. Today I'm going to be editing the piece of writing I wrote last week. Just as an example for you, so that you know how to apply the rules for editing to your own piece of writing. So. There's a number of things that we use when editing. So together we'd usually come up with a code of symbols, but we'll just use these ones today. They're kind of fun, they're they're clear, and they'll help us to correct anything we want to correct in our piece of writing. Just remember that you don't, I have used pictures here, but you can very easily convert them to handwritten symbols. They don't need to be funny, they just need to be consistent. So once you have a consistent um, mark for each of these points. So don't feel like you need to draw a very, very funny picture or anything. I've just done it to illustrate the point to you here on the PowerPoint. So make sure you don't spend too much time drawing each of these items just a very simple code will do okay so the first thing is an eraser and we use that when something needs to be deleted we just need to get rid of it from our piece of writing the next one is a magnifying glass and this is when something needs to be changed or made clearer next one we have is a question mark when something has been left out and the our audience is not sure what's going on our next one is an arrow and this is if some of the text needs to be moved around and our order needs to be changed our P represents punctuation that needs to be changed input or else taken out and finally SP we use this to mark somewhere in the text where we may have made a spelling mistake. So <clears throat> every week we practice to become proficient spellers and also by studying pieces of grammar we can become very good at editing punctuation. So every week we explicitly study these two points to become very good at correcting these two. So you're all the time improving as um, your ability to correct your own spelling and correct your own punctuation now these other four okay so these are skills that we learn through the writing process practicing our writing but most importantly and fundamentally by reading so the more reading we do the more proficient or the better we will get at being able to use these other four okay so it's really important that especially now while you're at home you know, if you if you feel like you've you've got your work done or you've a bit of extra time in your hands, don't waste it and keep reading because you'll be working these skills. And not alone will you be reading, but you will be improving your writing skills, and it's great fun too. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, I'm just going to read a paragraph and then I'm going to put in the little points of editing that I want to do. The whole class were excited as we gathered in the yard. The teacher and Marion paced up and down, running through a checklist. Checklist. I waved goodbye to my mum and joined the back of the line next to Martin. It was a clear summer's morning. Martin was chatty, but I couldn't pay attention as my mind as clear as mud. I was very nervous. The morning passed very quickly. We heard the Angelus bell and I knew it was time to go. Everyone scrambled to gather their props and various pieces of costumes. Before long, everyone was lined up outside the classroom and ready to go down to the community hall. We had a lot of fun in rehearsals, but now it was time for the big show. Okay, so there's a few points here that we need to... We that are, are clearly wrong and we need to edit so first of all we have a spelling mistake so here we have the teacher and Marion paced up and down running 
through instead of though okay so that's an incorrect spelling I waved goodbye to my mom and joined the back of the line next to Martin. It was a clear summer's morning, and this line then. Martin was chatty, but I couldn't pay attention as my mind, as clear as mud, I was very nervous. I think this line needs to be, the order of it needs to be changed. Okay, there are words missing too, but I think the order would better, I think the order of this line could be better. So that's why I'm putting in the arrow there now. Next one. The morning passed very quickly. We heard the Angelus bell and I knew it was time to go. So I've used very <coughs> in the previous line and I think I'm overusing very. So I need to cut it out <coughs> and maybe use a different word or not use it at all. Next one. Everyone scrambled to gather their props and various pieces of costumes. Before long, everyone was lined up outside the classroom and ready to go down to the community hall. Now, I've used everyone at the start, so before long, we were all, maybe something like that, instead of using everyone again. When we overuse words, they become tired, okay? So it's good to change our words and use different vocabulary. So while we're writing initially our first draft, we may not be aware of it, but when we go back to edit, we can spot things like that. So I'm going to get rid of the word everyone there. Next one. Why are we going to the community hall? It's not clear at the moment to my audience. And this is the first time I mentioned the community hall. So I need to be clear that that's where the show is on. Okay. So go down to the community hall where the show would be. Okay. So it's important sometimes to say things like that explicitly. Okay. <clears throat> Which means you say them straight up. Now, next paragraph. First, as I rushed into the darkened hall, I realised I didn't have my hat. My jaw almost hit the floor and my face went white with the fright. Marion to the rescue. We quickly went back and got a spare. Now, <coughs> I think there's a lot of things that need to be clarified here for my audience. First of all, as I rushed into the darkened hall, it's not clear what hall... I'm going into and why it's darkened. It could be any hall. So I think first of all, for a topic sentence, your topic needs to be front and center. So the whole idea behind this paragraph is I realized I didn't have my hat. So I need to make that more clear in my topic sentence. Now I do have it that I didn't have my hat, but I think this rushing into a darkened hall is a bit unclear. Now we know why I went into the darkened hall. It was going into the community hall where the show was going to take place. But I need to say it more clearly for my audience. So change the order of that sentence. The next one here is um, Marion to the rescue. I need to explain that more clearly. Why is Marion, how is Marion coming to the rescue? And also you see we have a spelling mistake. So here fright is spelled incorrectly now we hurtled back then we hurtled back to the hall Rob Heffernan style Marion is a stickler for the rules that was until we got to the door of the hall just in time to hear Avril announce that our class were up next we made a break beside stage while the audience chuckled at Avril's witty remarks it was only then I realised I didn't know where to stand on stage. The teacher had measured out the correct dimensions to the centimetre, but I just didn't trust his dodgy metre stick. <clears throat> okay, so quickly down through this one. I think that fr that reference to Rob Heffernan is lost in my audience, who are boys and Scalone, who might not be aware of who Rob Heffernan is at this stage. <clears throat> so I definitely need to change that. So what rules is Marion a stickler for? walking not running but that isn't clear so i need to clarify that here we have a problem with spelling so our class is one entity i know there's many boys in the class so i should use our class was instead of our class were next we should have punctuation in here avril's witty, witty remarks is the end of one sentence and i should start a new sentence but it was only then i realized and finally, I need to clarify what I'm talking about with the teacher, about the teacher. <clears throat>